Before we hop into the video and show how it all works, I just wanted to give you a quick preview of what we have so far. Hi Olivia, I'm making a video about our AI system. What do you want to say to the audience? I'd like to tell the audience that I'm very excited about the future of AI in video games, and I think it will be a huge improvement for the industry. Wow, yeah, me too. Are you excited for our NPC system to continue? I'm very excited for our NPC system to continue. Say I think it everyone. is going to be a great addition to the game. By everyone. Hi everyone, I wanted to share this project I've been working on recently and walk through some of the process of what has gone on with it so far. So starting from the beginning, my main goal of this project was to achieve three main things. Procedural conversations with NPCs, two-way vocal communication, and work with multiple actors seamlessly. So have two or more actors working at the same time in the conversation without getting confused. Now, of course, just like with any other project, it started to get a bit more complicated, both because of the features I wanted to add and then unforeseen bugs or just complexities in what I wanted to do. But I'm getting ahead of myself. I'll talk about those things later. But for now, let's start with how I did start. With the goals in mind of this AI NPC conversation project, I don't really have a name for it yet. We can dive into how I initially took the first steps. So starting off, I started with a blank Unity project in Unity 2021. So my first thing I wanted to do was actually get the speech recognition working, the AI result from OpenAI, and then the speech synthesis. I actually have experience with all three of these things to a some small degree, so this shouldn't have been too hard to get started. So the first major run-in I had was with OpenAI. Using OpenAI purely in C-sharp is pretty easy. Uh, OK Godolt, I think is how you say it, has a C-sharp .NET wrapper that you can use. Uh, it's on GitHub and you can just get it off of NuGet if you want and use it in your C-sharp project. So it's pretty straightforward. However, getting it to work with Unity actually is not as easy. Um, there's no package manager for Unity to use and it works just a little differently because of the .NET core versions or something like that. I don't really know. So anyways, I found this like article that kind of explained roughly what to do. And I kind of figured out the rest. So you basically just need to create a file in your project uh, that has these DLLs and then all the dependencies that are needed for each DLL. Some of the versions I had did not match with what Unity had, for example, like the JSON library for C Sharp. So I had to delete that and then give it my own. But after a while, I got it all sorted out and then I was able to access it through Unity. So once I got OpenAI working, the next step was just to get the Microsoft services working. And by Microsoft services, I mean the cognitive services uh, speech API. This is what I'll be using for both speech synthesis, so turning text into speech, and then also using it for voice recognition, turning my voice into text so I can get it generated by an AI. So the way this kind of flows is I will speak, my speech will be converted into text, I will then send that text to OpenAI to generate a response along with some other formatting I need to get a specific kind of result back I want. And then when I get that result back, I then feed that through to the voice synthesis program, which will then synthesize a voice and put it out into Unity where my character will use it. So I got this working and it was all pretty smooth. It was all working pretty nice. And so I wanted to work on actually getting the audio to play in Unity itself. Because right now it was just working through the default output device on my speakers. There's no directionality, no position and such. Uh, so I basically wanted to feed this through to a Unity audio source. However, this was a lot more complicated than I anticipated. Uh, basically, the reason why is because there's no option just to pipe it in. You know, it's not a Unity API. It doesn't know about anything Unity related. So I had to basically, so what I ended up doing is I got the raw byte array uh, for the audio. And then online, I found someone in a random like Unity thread, I think, showed how you can actually convert a byte array into a WAV. And then I used that WAV to put into a audio clip, which I then put into my audio source. So a little bit complex, but we did get it working in the end and it works pretty well. 
I will say there's a little bit of a delay, I think, because I'm using this. However, it's not much, and I might look into streaming that data later, so it's a little bit faster, but we'll see. I'm not sure how that will work. Anyways, so now at this point, we can speak, have it translated to text. That text gets auto-completed using OpenAI. The response is given back to us, and then we are able to play that response using our speech synthesis, and then output that to a Unity audio source. So something I'm kind of glossing over is how OpenAI generates this response. OpenAI is basically a glorified autocomplete. It's a really good autocomplete, but that's literally just what it is. So when you want it to be more like a chatbot, which is what I am doing, you need to format it in a certain way. Basically, we have a description of what the context is that we're in. Then we have a description of whatever kind of behavior or actions you want. In this case, I have a context of saying we're in a conversation between two people. And then I have a description of the current NPC that, you know, the AI is trying to be. And then I feed it some example conversations so it knows how the flow works. We have stopping points where the AI knows where to stop. That's what those dollar signs are. We feed all of that text data into the open AI and then it will kind of generate an autocomplete following those examples we already have. So that's how that works. It's a little complicated, but it lets us be really unique with how the AI generates its responses. And to make this a little easier to use, I actually put all this data into a separate scriptable, a separate scriptable object where we can actually just create multiple and program each with different settings based on what we want. So this really makes it easy so we can have different personality profiles for each uh, NPC that we have, NPC character. Right now, it's not super complex, the one I have set up, but you can get really in depth and you can really design specific characters and describe their personality attributes and you know how they react to things and such. It's really quite interesting. So you can get some really good varied characters with each of these. So now we have this personality profile built up and we can speak to it and have it generate a response back. So the next step is to maybe get a body for this character. So actually, before we go into making our NPC look more like an actual person, um, I do want to go over uh, the, I guess, hierarchy or how the flow of information works from the player to the AI, to the speech software, to the output, such like that. Because I'm not a, I'm not a trained you know, game developer. I'm not a programmer. I'm an electrical engineer, so I really don't have much experience with all of this. So I don't know what the normal way to do this would be, but I tried to think about it as logically as I could and using the skills I do have in C Sharp to my advantage, uh, since I'm still learning C Sharp as well. So what I ended up doing was I wanted everything to be reliant on the player. So without the player, nothing happens. So the player will have this speech generating uh, script that it can access. And basically on start, when the player is in the game, uh, it'll start searching for a phrase for the player to say. And until something is said, nothing happens. But when something is said, it fires off an event. And then my speech recognizer sends back text that the player said to the player itself. So the player now knows what it said, you know, in text form, and then the player can decide what to do next. So eventually I want to program the player to actually automatically select targets based on where you're looking at and how close you are to people. Uh, but for now, we're just tying it directly to one NPC. Uh, but when we have that target NPC, what we can do is when we get a response back with our text, we immediately send it off to our target NPC. The target NPC uh, has no reference of the player. Uh, all it knows is it waits for a response to be or a some text to be given to it so it is sent text to itself and then once it has that it then generates the autocomplete by sending it off to the open ai kind of response script that i made up uh, which i'm showing off here and then it generates that response sends it back to the npc the npc then sends it off to the synthesis program and then lastly um the synthesis program returns the actual audio uh byte array i think and then that audio is then generated and sent to the uh, NPC audio source. That's kind of complicated, but here's like a really basic flow diagram of what the dependencies are. I think it works out pretty well. Um, I definitely know that it's good to avoid 
uh, two-way communication, at least um, in terms of when you're having when you're having multiple things tied two-way. In the cases of like the autocomplete or the AI scripts, each NPC will have its own unique version, uh, its own kind of like clone instance of it. So then they can you know generate on their own time separately. Uh, I think that works out pretty well. Uh, also, something I didn't mention, which I will now, is a lot of this is async uh, threaded. It's not actually threaded. It's using tasks, which uh, do run on different threads, I believe, if I understand that correctly. Uh, but I tried to run as much of this as async and as task oriented as possible just to help performance where I could. Um, I did have some trouble with running certain Unity um, methods. Uh, on these tasks because sometimes tasks do run on different threads and a lot of what unity has needs to be run on the main thread unfortunately so i found this uh script on github someone made and i'll put it up on screen and it basically lets you dispatch to a task but only on the main thread uh so that's really useful for like the audio for example when i needed to convert that to an audio clip that could only be run on the main thread even though everything else was running on a different thread in the task so that's useful it's good to know um i learned a lot through that so anyways that's how the kind of game state so far is made up with and that's how it all works and flows through and it's working pretty well there's a bit of a delay i'd like to fix that if possible but it is running through like three separate apis and they're all web-based i believe so um you know there's gonna be a delay um, I'll deal with that later. Right now, I honestly have no clue and I don't want to spend forever trying to figure it out. Okay, we're ending off the video. Any last words to, to say to the audience? Well, I want to say thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more content like this. Wow, took the words right out of my mouth. This was a really fun experience for me. I want to thank Cascas for this opportunity. Yeah, same here. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Hey, everyone. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I'm going to stop it here. There is more to go over, like adding in the character, uh, having personality, like reactions and facial expressions. Um, getting movement in more like kind of normal game NPC stuff, but we're gonna stop it here for now uh, and we'll continue in the next video. So leave a like, please subscribe and do all those things, please. Uh, it really helps motivate me. Uh, it's kind of why I'm posting these videos is I like talking and sharing about what I'm working on. And it's also hopefully gonna be good for my motivation to help me continue and follow through with these projects. So I really hope you enjoyed. Please tell me if you did. Tell me if you have any suggestions or ideas for what to do with this. Um, I'd love to hear it. Um, join my Discord if you feel like it. I do a lot of 3D modeling and other programming stuff there too. So anyways, thank you so much. Stay tuned for part two and see you then.